Emily Apple, the Canary Investigation and UK uh, editor. Thanks for joining us today. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Um, you have visited Turkey several times for observations. Also, you have been very active on Hassan Cave as well. So, do you think um, Turkey is a democratic state? No, I don't. Um, every time I've visited the region, I've seen more and more evidence that it's not behaving as a democratic state would do. So, for example, I've been an independent observer for the last general election and the last local elections. And um, across the southeast, there's been intimidation, there's been electoral fraud, there's been people being sent to, so for example, I was in Sur, so there's people who were displaced, who were sent to the wrong polling stations, um, who then weren't allowed to vote. And whether it's in the elections itself or the political climate leading to the elections, there's no sense of democracy. Um, one of the points that's frequently made is that without a free press, and when you've got a press that is controlled by the ruling AKK party um, and with a state that locks up journalists who have critical opinions, you don't have the means of debate and having a discussion around an election. Um, and that combined with the number of HDP politicians who are in prison um, means that the Kurdish movement was going into the election at a democratic disadvantage because it didn't have a lot of the basic things that you would put in place for a democracy available to them to participate in those elections. Um, also, Turkey has a, a, a highest number of detained and prison journalists. There's also the journalists um, facing a death threat every day in Turkey. Can you imagine yourself as a woman journalist in Turkey? Only in the sense of the women journalists who I've spoken to and interviewed in Turkey who have to face such enormous repression and um, are facing detention and arrest on a daily basis for what they're doing. And to have the courage to carry on doing your job in those kind of circumstances is simply amazing. And I know from the minor amount of problems I've had entering the country. So for example, when I went to um, report on the elections, I was stopped by police at Istanbul airport who were very threatening and they threatened to deport me and in the end let me go. Um, but that's just a microcosm of what journalists are facing every single day um, in Turkey. What is your comments about the Turkish state's policies towards uh, political prisoners? It is absolutely outrageous. I mean, it was outrageous before um, coronavirus hit anyway because the amount of people they are locking up and the amount of people they are saying are terrorists, that are politicians, that are journalists, that are academics, is obscene. And, you know, going back to that first question about democracy, the kind of people that Turkey is locking up has no place in a democratic society, full stop. In terms of who they're releasing, it is utterly obscene that they are releasing known... Um, organised criminals, those with associations to the far right, that they will release those people, but they won't release journalists and MPs and academics. And even more so, the reports that they're using the virus as a weapon in prisons, so threatening prisoners that if they don't behave, they'll be put in with somebody with coronavirus. Um, it's very clear that, that Turkey are, is using the pandemic as a weapon. Yeah. Um, as you know, um, Kurdish leader Mr. Abdullah Öcalan has been uh, under isolation last 21 years now and he's not been able to meet his basic human rights as well. So what do you think Turkey is trying to achieve with uh, isolating Mr. Abdullah Öcalan? It's quite hard to say what they're trying to achieve. What they are doing is making a peace process impossible because Ajalan is central to any peace process 
um, that, that's going to take place. Um, the isolation must end. Ojalan should be released. Um, his ideas are inspiring people around the world and there, there's a two-part thing with this as well because we've got the criminalization of the PKK in places like the UK um, and where the PKK needs to be delisted we need to stop talking in terms of terrorism and talk about peace and building alternatives and Arjuna's voice is crucial to that um, and until he is released and until he can take his place at the negotiating table peace is going to be incredibly difficult um and if turkey's aim was for peace and it wasn't as it appears to be increasingly so with the invasions in rojava and iraq that that actually it's about wiping out kurdish voices if he actually wanted peace and erdogan wanted peace then ending the isolation and releasing Ajalan would be a major first step to actually achieving that peace and making the region a safer place and a better place for everyone. In terms of both political prisoners and Ajalan, it also needs a shift in terms of Western states and how, how they view things. So for example, in the UK at the moment, um, we've got a prisoner, Daniel Burke, who's on remand and he's accused of terrorism charges because he um, was planning to go to Rojava. So we're still in a position where in the UK, we've got a government that's happy to sell arms to the Turkish state. We've got a country where they're happy to lock up people who wanted to go and fight against ISIS and Daesh. And so the shift needs to come from all over the place. Um, and it's fundamental that us in other countries put pressure on our own government about their relationships to Turkey, their relationships with Erdogan, whether it's arms sales or whether it is um, locking up and persecuting Kurdish solidarity activists. Do you think um, governments should be more uh, putting more pressure against Turkey until uh, Turkey sets free the Erdogan and starts to negotiations as well as as well as they stop their uh, international and national aggression? Yeah, absolutely. Um, unfortunately, with the UK government, they seem keener on um, post-Brexit trade deals with Turkey than they are about human rights. And as ever with governments like ours, um, they talk about human rights when it's convenient, but um, ignore them most of the time. But there is absolutely no way that... Um, the UK government should be selling arms to Turkey. Um, they're being used to repress people. They're being used in an unlawful invasion. And it is utterly obscene that there are British companies that are profiting from this death and destruction and repression that's going on. And we all have a responsibility to put pressure on the government and put pressure on the companies that are dealing in these arms. Emily Apple, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for supporting our channel from um, the very famous magazine of um, Canary. <laughs> thank you very much. You have been very kind. <laughs> thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Emily.